In the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our readings today shake up our lazy and slow days of summer, where we try and enjoy this time of the season. Last week we read of the parable of the sower, one known to many Christians, and today we hear Jesus going further on a description of our world and how it has gotten in such a mess in his parable of the weeds and the wheat. And many of you will remember in an older term it was the, weed, the wheat and the tars. Jesus tells the disciples and the crowds this parable, then goes into detail to explain it to them. When the disciples ask him so that they will fully understand, and Jesus does this, he wants them to get this. This reading is also apocalyptic. It tells what the final judge, judgment will be at the end of times. Jesus told this parable to convey something about the kingdom of heaven. A landowner sowed good seed, but an enemy sowed weeds in the field as well. For fear of damaging the wheat, the owner decided to not uproot the wheat. He was going to let them grow together. Then at harvest time, they would be separated, the two of them storing the wheat and burning the weeds. The sower of the good seed is the son of man, Jesus and the enemy is the devil, and the weeds are his followers, and the harvest is the end of the age. There are those who believe that they know who the wheat people are and the weed people are. We already know too, don't we? But do we really know? Should we make these judgments? When I was young, my friends and I used to ride our bikes all over town. We would ride up one block and down the other. We had fun riding all day. But there was a place that we dared not go, and it was near a house of a boy named Billy. He was the terror of the neighborhood. He was a bully personified. Once he caught myself and another friend riding down his block, and he ran us out. And we were glad to get away with our lives, let me tell you. He was some kind of mean. There was nothing good about him. If I had known this parable back then, I would know for certain that he was a weed. And having an angel come along and snatch him up was a pretty appealing idea to a 10-year-old. Couldn't happen to a better person. But you know what? I was wrong. When young, wheat and weeds look a lot alike, and it's extremely hard to tell the difference. Billy, he grew up to be a pillar of the community. He was a religious person, too, someone who worked with non-profits pro and help agencies to better his community. Sometimes those we think are weeds may turn out not to be weeds, and some wheat may have some weediness in them. Jesus tells us and tells those of his time that the children of God will be living alongside those who are evil, those who are not followers of God, but followers of the devil. So when Jesus tells us this, it's not a surprise to us or to anyone here or even to his disciples back then. We know this. They knew this. We only have to turn on the news or read the newspapers to see this. And this last week alone, we have heard of the downing of the Malaysia airliner and the war in Gaza. It happens all the time. Many times we shake our heads and we don't know what to think of this world. We live in a world where there's always a surprising mix of good and bad, joy and pain, courage and cowardice, faithfulness and betrayal, belief and unbelief. The parable does not call, call us to be passive, though, in the face of wrong and injustice or to not to deal with those who break the law. But it does remind us 
that we do not have the ability to pluck out all the less than godly things from our life and that sometimes we can do more harm than good by being too certain that we can always tell the good from the bad especially in the areas of beliefs that people hold. This parable also reminds us that God is the judge, not us. And thanks be to God, too, for that. It takes a huge weight off of us. Many times when we judge for one reason or another, we get it wrong. The God who loves us will never get it wrong. Let's look at verse 41, too. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers. So it is not just the people, but the causes of sin, too. Think of it. A world where all the causes of sin would be thrown out. That surely would be close to heaven. No more murder. No more hate or malice. Nothing that would separate us from God or living in love with our fellow human beings. So Jesus knows in this world that we live in that there is sin, and there are people who, for whatever reason, work for the destruction of our community, a state or a country, or the whole world. But if this is all that we see in this parable, that we should not judge people, and we acknowledge we live in a world where sin is present, then we have missed some of the point of this parable. God planted wheat, the good seed, you and I, and all of our Christian brothers and sisters. He expects us to grow and produce good fruit in the world despite what may be going on all around us. With the causes of sin present and those that do evil our God needs us to stand up and carry out his commandments, to share the love of God to all people, and to love our neighbors, and read that, everyone, as we would love ourselves. The possibilities to help are endless. The mission opportunities are endless. In 1984, the Anglican Consultative Council developed the five marks of mission, and in 2009, it was adopted by the General Con Convention of the Episcopal Church and is being used as a guide, as, as, and being used to guide the church in its mission, the things that Christ called us to do. You might also call these the five T's, tell, teach, tend, transform, and treasure. To tell. Proclaim the good news of the kingdom. To teach. To teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. To tend. To respond to human need by loving service. To transform. To seek to transform the unjust parts of our society. Challenge violence and pursue peace. And to treasure safeguard our creation and renew the earth. When we do these things, we are showing through our actions and our love the fruit that Christ asked us to produce, and we are making a difference in a world that sometimes seems to be covered up with weeds. In closing, in the book, Mother Teresa, Meditations from a Simple Path, the author writes, none of us are called to serve the particular way that Mother Teresa and the missionaries of charity serve, but we are called to serve others in everyday life. It is not how much we do that is important. Rather, it is the love with which our actions are performed that is most important. The smallest action done in love will lead us towards peace. The seed that God has planted, the wheat, us, was planted for a reason by a loving God. Let's be great wheat. Amen.